Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today I'm looking at Star Citizen once more. Now, I'm not so much looking at the game, although I will get to play some more of that later. I'm going to be looking at a bunch of changes that have been coming through the system, and I'm going to start out with this. This is their new online ship viewer, and it's specifically being used to show off the, the new Xi'an Car 2 scout ship. Now, this is something that was actually launched right at the end of the original pledge campaign in November last year and uh, it was sold for one day at $150 with lifetime insurance and it is an alien spacecraft which uh, these are the engines if I bring up the points of interest you'll see that it has these like propulsion systems out here that can twist around and angle the whole thing if you remember in my uh, in my physics video and the physics of uh, space fighters I commented about the positioning of the engines and everything well this actually gets around a bunch of that by having the engines just be able to point in all sorts of directions so it's a pretty cool design. It's an alien ship. It was only available for a limited time and it cost a ton of money for those that were interested. Uh, I actually bought one for various really stupid reasons, but, uh, uh, you know, I'm kind of glad to have it after all. So yeah, this is the page and you can see some of the artist concept. Uh, people were buying this previously without knowing what it even looked at. But it's pretty cool, yeah, the object actually exists in the web page and you can muck around it all you like. Now another thing that uh, gets discussed often and I've never really touched on is the ship specs page. The ship specs uh, specifications, obviously, is just a whole bunch of random numbers about the spacecraft that are in the game and their numerous variants. And we can just drag this over here. We've got the Aurora, the 300 series, the M50, the Hornet with its variants, the Avenger, uh, and the Avenger Trainer, which hasn't really well, has been in the game engine but hasn't been available for sale. Then there's the three Freelancer variants, which I never even got around to looking at because uh, I uh, they changed the way that uh, the data format of the the file, so I was no longer able to just make my space, my hangar filled with all the ships in the game. So I never got around to making a video of that. Uh, towards the end of the pledge campaign, they added um, these as stretch goals. The the luxury 890 jump yacht, the Carrick, which is, a, I don't know, some sort of probe scout ship, uh, exploration ship, the Drake Herald, which is an information runner, the Hull Sea is like a giant cargo ship, there's the Banu Merchantman, which is another alien ship, the Mustang is a, a new starter vehicle, you'll have the option to pick between the, the Aurora and the Mustang apparently. The Orion is a mining ship, which uh, is not named after my son, sadly. And the Aegis Surveyor is a, an industrial salvage ship. So, you know, you have all these numbers and people spend a lot of effort theory crafting and working around these numbers. And the truth is, they change completely randomly. And you should not decide that your ship that you've paid hard earned cash for is bad or good just because some numbers change. Seriously, uh, this is all a bunch of fun, a bunch of fluff material, largely. And even the versions in the game, in the dogfighting module, aren't there. For example, the in the dogfighting module, you have the 300i trainer, which of course isn't even here. But actually, let's go and take a look what's happened in the hangar. Okay, so we are back in the hangar, and uh, one of the things that keeps getting commented on is the motion blur and other effects, and, and I actually think the game developers have just kind of found that there's a bunch of options in the game engine and turned them all the way up. Now, if you hit the tilde key, which is, you know, usually underneath your escape key next to the one, that brings up the game console. You can actually turn off things like motion blur using R underscore motion blur, one word, zero. That'll make things a little better. You see, you'll get a green echo of the, the response. You probably also want to turn off chromatic aberration. Now, chromatic aberration is the process by which glass, uh, chromatic, and I can't spell it, and speak at the same time. Uh, I still can't spell it and speak at the same time. Aberration. Set that to zero. That is the process by which lenses will focus red light and blue light at different depths. So you'll see a blue halo around objects. 
Um, it's very annoying if you have a refracting telescope. And the amazing thing is, you know, we've figured out how to make glass that doesn't do that, except they've apparently forgotten how to do that in whatever century this is set in. You can also turn off sharpening and uh, HDR and bloom. That, uh, you know, that'll help quite a bit with performance and make things look a little uh, cleaner. There we go. So turning this off and everything moves a little bit. Oh, apparently he was able to slide around there. Ooh, yeah. Uh, anyway, if we want to get in the VR simulator, of course, you need to pick up the helmet, which is right here. You can pick this up and you'll notice that uh, we have lost his uh, highly efficient hairstyle and we just have some sort of skull cap thing going on there. So not quite the man he used to be. Okay, so let's take a look at the modified freelancer. And I am very late with this, I know. People have been showing off all the variants, but this is the stock one with its nice shiny hull. Uh, you can't take those guns off yet, still. But uh, I can actually show you that the fittings in the interior actually work now. And the lighting works. That was a bug for a while. But look, we have this new little kitchen area with uh, benches that will fold down. You have a modif... well, the toilet is now basically invisible. You can't now... you can't see in anymore to see that somebody's taking a dump. Uh, and you can now get into... into these. I don't wonder if you can get up in the top bunk. No, you can't. Oh, there! Yeah, you can get up on the top bunk if you like. So you can actually get into the beds and uh, appreciate, you know, just how lucky you are. Uh, all the pl all the sh all the seats actually work now, so you can get in the back seat and uh, instead of having to call shotgun all the time, you can get a yeah. I guess you know this is nice because you don't see all the crazy stuff going on outside and you can be a little more calm. Okay, I like to set up my spacecraft before fighting because of course there's a whole bunch of uh, variants you can get. So here's the here's my uh, Origin 300. And the main thing is this gun on the nose is a bulldog repeater. Let me just move the camera so we can actually read this. Bulldog repeater whatever. It's under weapons. Now, you can grab the Aminsky laser cannons off of your other Origin 300 series. If you've got the 3 350, you only have Mark 3s, but uh other people will have access to Mark IV, so you should be able to have three of these Aminsky laser cannons on your spacecraft. And you know what? They kick butt. They are pretty darn impressive. Now, my spacecraft is, of course, over there, but big improvement is you can just hit the escape key and go straight to Arena Commander. It just happens as fast as that. Jump in my Origin 300 trainer, and I now have access to the Spectrum match because the first 200,000 subscribers or backers now have access to multiplayer. Unfortunately, multiplayer is a little touched right now, let's see. Let's do a squadron battle at the Dying Star and see what happens. Okay, come on, come on. Let's. What? It bumped me back after finally getting a login. Um, okay, perseverance will pay off. Public match. Uh, we want Squadron Battle because I prefer to fight as a team. We're fighting and against the Dying Star. Nope. There. Yes. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I hear the music. <gasps> we got a login. Okay, waiting for players. Players. Game starting in 3, 2, 1. Okay. So, I like the Origin 300i. I like to fly it with Comstab disabled. And I have to hold, like, Control and Caps Lock, hit that twice to actually get that to happen. I'm flying with a mouse because joystick control is utterly terrible. Uh, it's poorly optimized, it has giant dead spots, and it... Well, point is that I can fly with a mouse a million times better, but let's go after Mr. McQueen. Proximity alert! Proximity alert. Missile lock and a missile away. And look at those Aminskys just slicing through the target. Brilliant! Except my shields are critical. Okay. Refreshing shields. That's a good thing to hear. Is it just me and him? Contact. There, Mr. McQueen. Is there anybody else in this match? Wait! Um, first of all, this is a squadron of, like, me and the other guy. Like, fighting against you. Wait, and this is Broken Moon as well. It's not like the Dying Star. Whoa! That is, that is a bit of a bug there. So I'm switching off Comstab. 
like so I can actually get my strafe controls. It's really frustrating to have to turn that off because I just oh yes yeah you notice how I started to roll before hitting that guy that's because I started to strafe except I hadn't switched off the IFCS okay come on get this guy hostile eliminated thank god he's flying a hornet I'm flying a 300i but I have the the magnificent Aminsky laser cannons which do great amounts of damage Okay, McQueen. It, I think it is a team battle, but there is teams of one. <laughs> and we're in the wrong location. I don't care. I'm just happy to be in and shooting somebody. Oh, missile away. And that's hostile eliminated. That's three kills to me. Oh, oh look. Wait, wait. Grimstein. Grim, or Grimstein. I don't know. You are finally... Oh, incoming missile, ZX, ah, missile evaded, and we get some glitching, come on, stop glitching. So these are slow firing lasers, but when they hit, they just do a serious amount of damage. Missile launched, and it went the wrong way, and I guess I died? Oh well, c'est la vie. Come on, press X to respawn, press X to respawn, okay. Respawning. Origin jump works. Origin jump works. Hello. Done. Cartho. Oh, we have a four. So I think it's thrown us into completely the wrong game mode. And he's moved forward. Oh, where is he? Stern shielding depleted. That's not good. And I. Okay. I got torn up there apparently by being a terrible pilot. Uh, but I am actually top of the scoreboard right now, despite the fact that this is pretty much my first game in multiplayer, although I've played Vandal Swarm quite a bit. If if your ID is, citizen ID is less than 200,000, you have access now. Um, unfortunately, if you've only got a three, uh, an Aurora, then you are fighting at a serious disadvantage. Then again, perhaps you can use that to your advantage as people underestimate you. Lizards! Where are we? Missile lock! And off it goes. Oh, must, somebody must be shooting. Oh, crap! I've. Wait, wait. Oh, man, what is it? Ah! You know what? The tab button controls look, and it is right next to the, the caps lock button, so if I hit that by accident, then I lose control of my ship. That's great! I need to be able to remap these keys. Den Carthel asks, what's with teams? I think that uh, he too is exp Oh, what the heck? I apparently can no longer look ahead. I'm, I'm caught in a spin here. My camera has reset in the lo wrong location. Uh, let's just eject. <laughs> Maybe that'll fix it. Well, at least eject still works. Bye bye, cruel world. I've decided to leave you. I like the view from out here. Can, I wonder, can you headshot the other players when they're, like, ejected? Okay. Let's get this. Ah, uh, no. Now we have everything working. Okay. Comstab. Contact, contact. I don't like to disabling G-Lock and the 300i because you just end up get hitting G-Lock all the time and uh, you can't see anything. Okay, where are we? Where? Contact. Contact, another contact. Dun Carthel in his three. Everybody's flying 300 eyes because they are the best ship. They are more agile, and you can put these big laser cannons on them that just own the other players. Oh, he's doing that whole cunning teleport maneuver. Ha, look at him. I like the way half of his ship just disappears in the heads up display. And there's TC McQueen still trying to fly his Hornet. I think everybody else is flying 300 eyes. He's a ways a ways though. Okay. Let me get in range. Now, I wish there were a button that would actually lock on to the guy nearest me, rather than necessarily the guy in front of me, because I'd like to know if somebody is sneaking up next to me. The, the little radar at the bottom is not the easiest to read. 
Missile lock, missile away, and bullets being fired, or photons being dispatched. They call them lasers, but they're not traveling at the speed of light. Scan initiated, that's another target. Missile lock and incoming missile! Missile evaded. So, the thing, the game... What the heck? Did I just die again? But it, there was absolutely no warning of that. I think they must be using the, the Aminsky laser cannons as well, because those just go like a hot laser knife through buttery shields. Core system operational and disabled right away, because I don't need it. Ooh, is that a... Oh, no, that's a dead ship. Don Dencartho. Incoming missile, chaff. Oh. Who was firing at me? How come I didn't hear that? Catastrophic damage. And there's part of my wing gun and the rest of my spaceship. That was short but sweet, let's say. But, uh, okay, I've heard that people just find this completely unfun. And, I mean, it is glitchy and there are bugs, but it's not completely unfun. It, I'm thinking they will fix bugs. I, I have faith that they will actually fix the control system at some point. Uh, it would be nice to have the option to fly this thing with something other than mouse, to be honest. <laughs> uh, there's some joke about how Elite is a pay-to-win game because if you pay to have a joystick then you can beat all the other players. <laughs> uh, it's quite the opposite here. If you use the $10 mouse that you got with your computer at Walmart then uh, you are at an advantage over those people flying with $500 HOTAS setups. Weapon system has received catastrophic damage. Hep weapon has received catastrophic damage. There, do I have missiles? Uh, apparently not. My missile button is not doing anything, but my lasers are still targeting. Oh, wow, what color is that? And. Oh, we got a missile lock now. Okay, I think that guy couldn't have been in the game since I, he wasn't locking on. There is definitely a, a whole issue with synchronizing activity in multiplayer. And. Oh! There's the rest of my spacecraft gone. And my guns aren't firing! Ah, there and I just disintegrate. No! Come on, X to respawn. Press X to respawn and then re enter the fray. Have a very nice day as I'm blowing you up. up. Okay, Grimstein. I, now I'm just thinking of the Rammstein song. Okay, Grimstein. No, I'm not gonna do that. Okay, getting close enough using... I'm using... I'm trying to use the, the decoupled mode to slip sideways so he doesn't see me, but... He apparently is able to perform some miraculous turning. And... Missile lock! Missiles are just, like, super powerful. They, they almost always, it, you know, it just feels like it's a, a battle of turning and spamming chaff and firing missiles. And I'm not really feeling the, I'm not feeling the same depth of combat at this stage. They're, they're going to have to work a lot on this flight model to make it as good or as interesting as certain other titles. And and I'm looking at the likes of Free Space and you know, Diaspora, and of course, Elite. And I die again, apparently, with no warning at all. Okay, oh, he's at 10, I'm at 8. I need to catch up. Den Kartha probably isn't hitting the tab key all the time and, and having to detach it. It's very frustrating. You know, it doesn't work for someone with my giant fat fingers. It works for people with little nimble ballet type, thing, type fingers, like him. He's clearly able to dance his fingers across the keyboard with some skill. Like a professional timist. I require a final kill for victory. Okay. Well, uh, let's try and get it without getting killed myself. 
Okay, we have him and we have him. And uh, where is he? I haven't been shooting him much at all. Oh, where'd he go? Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Come on, I gotta get this kill. Incoming missile as well, apparently. Miss. Oh, look, somebody joined just at the last minute. But it looks like uh, I. Looks like I came in second. That is not bad for a first goal, but uh, yeah, Arena Commander is playable for those with suitable citizen numbers. It definitely needs some improving, but I will be playing it a bit more. I'm Scott Manley, fly safe.